Mall of America. For more than 30 years, it has been a retail leader and an international destination, and it remains the largest mall in the U.S. Not to mention it welcomes millions of guests from around the world. It's huge, but it's also so much more. In this podcast, you're going to hear the real stories of how it started and why it continues to thrive. You'll hear about challenges we faced along the way and what you can learn from them. We will feature guests and experts from all walks of life and business, and along the way, you'll laugh, learn, and maybe even change the way you look at things. So if you're a fan of the mall, a brand new visitor, an entrepreneur, or a dreamer, prepare to dive deep into so much more. This podcast is presented by the Bloomington Convention and Visitors Bureau. Welcome to So Much More, a Mall of America podcast where we bring thought leaders, industry experts, governmental leaders to the table to have bold and exciting discussions. I'm excited to be joined today by my co-host, Jill Renslow. Jill is the Chief Business Development and Marketing Officer. Jill, welcome. Thank you, Dan. And our very special guest is the mayor of the city in which we reside, beautiful Bloomington, Minnesota, uh, Mayor Tim Bussey. Welcome, Tim. Thank you, Dan. Thank you for having me. I'm very excited to be here. Joe, good to see you as well. It's good to see you, Tim. We're going to have a great conversation today. The first question, just to get this started, is I need to know this. Is it Mayor Tim Bussey or Mayor Tim Bussey? Because I've heard it both ways and I just want to know. <laughs> it depends on where you are. It, and it honestly does. I think okay. if you're south of the river, it's Bussey. <laughs> if you're south of the Minnesota River, it's Bussey. But as you get north of the Minnesota River, it's Bussey. Okay. I yeah. never knew what the distinction <laughs> exactly. was. So the, yes. And we're north of the river. Yes, we are. So we're going with Mayor Tim Bussey. Bussey, yes. Perfect. <laughs> I'm so glad you clarified that because I've been very curious over the That's years. That's right. I love it. Uh, Mr. Mayor, welcome to the podcast. So glad to have you here. You've been a friend of the mall for years and years. Tell us a little bit about your, your political journey, how you got to be mayor, how long you've been there, what you did before that. Well, um, thank you. Thanks for having me. I'm, I'm excited to be here. This is, yeah. uh, uh, this is fun, and I appreciate the opportunity to talk to you guys. So people ask me, what, why, why did I run for mayor? And I tell them the story. I, I was a graduate student, as a graduate student at the University of Minnesota at the Humphrey School. Uh, and I got my first job was at the League of Minnesota Cities, and I got a chance to meet mayors and council members and, and even, you know, appointed and elected officials from across the state. Nobody was getting rich. Nobody was getting famous. They were just doing good work for their community, and I was 22 years old, and I was impressed by that, and I thought, you know, I would like to do that. Someday, if I ever do something like that, that's what I'd like to do. And then we had kids, and so 20 years passed before I had <laughs> any opportunity to do something like that. But then an opportunity came along, and mm -hmm. I was appointed and then elected to the Bloomington City Council, and I've been mayor for four years now. So. And how long did you serve on the city council? I was on the city council for eight years. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. So you actually have had a lot of interaction with Mall of America over the years, right? And, and uh, Jill and I have interacted with you on so many occasions over the past uh, 12 or more years. Mm -hmm. Uh, we all understand that uh, for an organization like Mall of America to be successful, there has to be a private-public partnership, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Let's talk a little bit about that, if you would. Talk about the vision the city had for this property um, before the mall was built. Well, I, I am always stunned at the, the vision and the, the boldness and the, the brazenness, basically, of Bloomington city officials. And, and well before I was in the chair of mayor, just... To, to imagine on this site that they built a baseball stadium on spec, basically. They, they, yeah. they had no baseball stadium here or no baseball team to play in that stadium. They built the stadium out in the cornfield and it turned into a Metropolitan Cent, uh, Stadium and then met center not too long after that. And then when the teams moved downtown, uh, this wonderful palette that they could have done anything with, could have been big box retail, it could have been any number yep. of things. And the city, in conjunction with state leaders and uh, our friends at Triple uh, Five, conceived of the Mall of America. And that, that kind of bold thinking just absolutely stuns me. And, and what is uh, uh, impressive about that is that it, there was the understanding, I think, all along in all of these bold projects, the, the importance and the necessity of a public-private partnership. And I think the, the city of Bloomington and, and the state of Minnesota, really the, the partnership with the mall over the past 30 years, mm -hmm. it's been the poster child, I think, of public-private partnership. People understanding, uh, that a partnership is where each side benefits in one way or another, and you yep. work to, to make sure that the other is successful in some way, shape, or form. And that's happened over the years, between uh, certainly with the city and the mall, but even in the early years with the state. I mean, Rudy yeah. Perpich, the vision that he had for this, this site was, was very impressive, and to see it play out as it has, uh, has just been, as I said, very impressive. And so it's, uh, 
it, it's a textbook example of how a public-private partnership should work. Yeah, it's a really good lesson for people and businesses and city governments around mm -hmm. the country yes. as well, yes. what they can do when they work. It. And it hasn't always been smooth. We've had issues no. before, mm -hmm. but like any good partner, we work through them and figure them out, right? Absolutely. And I think there's been a string of great leadership through Bloomington. You talked about Purpage. Yeah. Um, you've talked about, I mean, from a state and a city perspective, um, you had a long-term mayor before you took mm -hmm. the seat. Mm -hmm. So obviously coming in after Mayor Winstead, what was your vision and the legacy elements that you wanted to impact with the city of Bloomington as you have taken service for well, the state? Well, uh, Gene, of course, was mayor for 20 years, mm -hmm. and I always made the analogy, you, you don't want to be the guy that replaces Kirby Puckett in center field. You want to be the guy who replaced the Kirby Puckett. And he replaces the guy who replaced Kirby Puckett yep. in mm -hmm. center field, basically. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it, it's a tough act to follow. Mm -hmm. And I've been fortunate to have uh, great city staff working around me, a great city council working with me. Uh, and my vision, uh, I think it's... It's been a lot of things over the years. Obviously, the first two years of my mayorship it was basically survival, trying to get through mm -hmm. the pandemic. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, I, I knew a lot about city government, and with my background at the League of Cities, at with on the, on the uh, council and so on. But nowhere did I imagine a, a global pandemic, mm -hmm. uh, my, and that took up basically the first two years of of my job as mayor. And it was it was hard. But then the last the last two years. It's changed completely, and it's it's been what I was hoping for and what I could envision as, as mayor. And one of the things that we did was um, uh, we started it actually during pandemic. We started these meetings with masks on uh, to put together a long-range strategic plan, a community-based long-range strategic plan. So it wasn't just the council and city staff sitting in a room trying to figure out what the strategic plan should be. We involved the community, hundreds of members of the community yeah. were involved in, in focus groups and conversations and uh, a core planning team to figure out what Bloomington should really be. Mm -hmm. And came up with a vision statement, and you've heard me use this vision statement yep. before, mm -hmm. and I think it's, it's so unique, and uh, it's, it's unique to the city that it, it kind of represents, and it's to, um, to cultivate an enduring, remarkable community where people want to be. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of words there, uh, but I, the key to a lot of it is where people want to be. Yep. Mm -hmm. The vision being here in Bloomington, we want to make this a, a community where people want to be, mm -hmm. where whether it's, whether it's through retail, through outstanding jobs, through our parks, through our schools, through our strong neighborhoods. We just want to, we, we want to be a community where people look at it and they say, that would be a good city to live in. I want to be there. Yep. And so the vision that we have and the work that we're doing, I think all points to that. The work mm -hmm. that we've been doing on public safety, the fact that when it snows, we plow the streets. Mm -hmm. Imagine that. Uh, <laughs> the, the work that we're doing with our park system master plan, uh, the, the, the emphasis on the hospitality industry, the emphasis on so many different things. Mm -hmm all are pointing toward the notion of we want to be a community where people want to be. Yeah, and we feel it. I mean, I love mm -hmm. residing in Bloomington, and we work so closely with Minneapolis and St. Paul as well, mm -hmm. but we feel it. We feel the development in South Loop, especially in this corridor of Bloomington, mm -hmm. and the vibrancy and just the energy yeah. that has brought. And so it's, I applaud you and the leadership of mm -hmm. the city because you guys are making a difference, and we see that with our development and the support that you've given us over the years. Thank you. And, and the other part of that, uh, that whole mission statement, the word that I always go back to is cultivate, and I'm a gardener. You guys know that. I, yes. I, I love to garden. He has a beautiful backyard, <laughs> just saying. Uh, but, the, but the notion, if you're a gardener in Minnesota, you know that it just doesn't happen. You do have to cultivate mm -hmm. it, and it takes work to cultivate, you know, preparing the soil, selecting the right plants or, or seeds or you know, adding manure, whatever you need to do to cultivate it and make it work. Mm -hmm. And whether you're gardening or building a community, that's the same kind of thing. You've got to cultivate what you do. And we have spent a lot of time over the last couple of years cultivating relationships to make Bloomington a place that people want to be in a yep. lot of different ways. You know, and I think the mall holds the same philosophy, mm -hmm. right? It takes a lot of hard work mm -hmm. and you plant the seeds and you help help it grow to become something that's really beautiful. Um, you both mentioned before vision and, and taking a chance in a sense, right? And we talked about uh, Governor Perpich, who was a big, you have to admit, mm -hmm. if nothing else, he took mm -hmm. big shots at yeah. things and he tried some really amazing things. Um, Recently, uh, Minnesota and the U.S. Um, uh, put out a world bid for Expo 2027, which mm -hmm. is essentially a world's fair, mm -hmm. right, through the BIE in Paris. Both of you were intimately involved. 
Um, I'd love Jill to sh for you to share kind of your vision and your hope and your role in that and then yours and because we just heard the results and they mm -hmm. and they weren't to our favor mm -hmm. but I think there's some really good lessons there as well Absolutely. but what was that yeah. process like? I think the key is about giving hope and the opportunity for the future not only for Bloomington but for the state of Minnesota and for the U.S. Mm -hmm. to that matter. Yeah. I was more involved with the 2023 bid when the U.S. Per first put their name of the hat as we renewed our membership with the BIE um, and then obviously supported these efforts this last go around and you know it's about working together as a community and I think Minnesota especially has a unique um, connection when we have these big opportunities in front of us. Mm -hmm. You saw it with the Super Bowl yeah. in 2018 when we looked at the World Expo that energy was back and the, the the ideas that circled around having the world have their eyes on Minnesota with that was a huge opportunity and it got all of the pieces moving together about what was possible. Mm -hmm. We have this land to our north and to the east here in Bloomington an opportunity for development. It just gets the wheels spinning and I think what's exciting that even though we didn't get the vote in our favor is that momentum is there and yeah. ideas, the visions are alive. And I think we have a lot of opportunity to work together with this private public partnership mm -hmm. to create amazing things for our future. Agreed. Agreed. And I, I think you're right. And it was a combination of things. It was, it was kind of the, the, the big vision look at things. The United States hasn't hosted a, a world fair, a world expo since 1984 in New Orleans. Mm -hmm. So the thought that it was time to bring the world back to the United States and show them what we have to offer. The, the theme that we had, healthy people, healthy planet, wellness and well-being for all, as it tied in with our, our health and wellness industry here in yep. Minnesota and the, the Mayo Clinic and the University of Minnesota and Medical Alley and all that we do here in Minnesota as it relates to that. And just the, just the thought of um, hosting a world fair, a world expo, and what it would mean for the community and what it would mean for the region to be among those cities that have actually hosted that. That's kind of the visionary part. The nuts and bolts part of it, uh, from the city of Bloomington's perspective, we were looking at it as a chance to really jumpstart development on basically what are surface parking lots. Yep. And God bless surface parking lots. I, you know, I, I tailgated <laughs> on a lot of these parking lots around this building. Years ago. Years ago. <laughs> years ago. That's, uh, but it's, um, you know, a surface parking lot is not the highest and best use mm -hmm. of that land. And so we were looking at an opportunity to do some economic development. And was a great, it was a great bid. It was a wonderful effort. We had fantastic support uh, locally, certainly at the state level. Our, our, our uh, congressional delegation put yep. in a ton of work. We had the White House. We had the State Department. Everybody put forth a fantastic effort. Frankly, I don't know what we could have done differently or better. Yeah. And we ended up not, not winning it. And, but I think the lesson is that we've seen um, both from our ownership triple five mm -hmm. because they think this way all the time and i also think the city of bloomington is you have to think big and you have to try oh without question yeah right no, I, I think that's exactly right i mean it's uh, to quote that uh you know esteemed philosopher wayne gretzky you know you miss a thousand percent 100 percent of the shots you don't take mm -hmm. yeah we took a shot and we we came up short yeah. and you it's it's know. too bad but we did we put bloomington on the world stage Yes. Uh, the, the development opportunities are um, now on the front of mind for a lot more people, both mm -hmm. locally and nationally and internationally. Uh, I don't think it's, um, and that's not just blowing smoke either. I think that's, that is true. The folks that we've talked to, they, I, I agree, the momentum is there, and we've got to mm -hmm. figure out a way to continue that momentum, Absolutely. to figure out the, the, the public-private partnership as it continues to move forward, and how to develop all of this land around here uh, in a way that makes it a place where people want to be. You know, one of the fun things about Mall of America, one of the many fun things, is we constantly add new attractions, new stores, new retail, we're, new events. We had a water skiing squirrel over the <laughs> weekend, which, which was amazing. <laughs> Literally, water skiing squirrel. Swiggy the squirrel. Um, but Jill, you just left a meeting right before we started taping with a new uh, fun attraction that's coming. And I'd love for you to share a little bit about that because, A, it's awesome and it's exciting, but it also is going to lead into a question about <laughs> this, this person's background. I know. I wanted to get into uh, Mayor's background here at the mall and his wife as yeah, well. And yeah. we've got a lot of history. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I love it because your family enjoys this this venue for a lot of your traditions, which mm -hmm. is a lot of fun. But um, Dan's question with regards to a new tenant that we're bringing in, and I don't want to give away too much because yeah. I think that there's a whole other podcast. That oh, we can well, of cover. course. Um, but, you know, we recognize the seasonality of our industry and the Halloween holiday has really picked up steam over the years. Um, we've always celebrated with different events in our theme park with 
Booniverse and Nickelodeon. Mm -hmm. um, we've had Spirit of Halloween that comes back yep. every year and with great success because this the, the customer base loves to celebrate Halloween. So we recognize that and we recognize that there is a need in this market for an experience like no other. Um, mm -hmm. And a lot of the experiences in this Minneapolis St. Paul Bloomington marketplace are outside. Yep. And we know that outside in September, October can be beautiful and warm and they can also be snowy and cold. <laughs> and so and challenging. being yeah. able to be inside <laughs> with a Halloween, Halloween experience is yep. very attractive for our guests. And and to be able to bring a very high quality hot experience is what we're exploring. Um, so more to come, but it will be a mid-September through October experience and it will be a gated ticketed um, event yep. that will go on sale August 1st. So we're excited to be able to share more details to come, but it's, it's bringing back that haunted experience for our guests. Love it. But Halloween and entertainment in the theme park at the center of Mall of America <laughs> has some history with you and your family. It does indeed. It does. So uh, as you mentioned, Joe, we, we go, my family goes back a long way, all the way mm -hmm. to, my dad was an electrician and actually wired some of the stores during the original build out of that. Mall of America. Yeah. So, which was, uh, we always thought it was kind of cool. My brother-in-law was a, uh, uh, a coffee boy basically for the opening and he, he did a lot of running in the PR department. Okay. Uh, so we've got this connection and for years my wife was the head of entertainment at then Knott's Camp Snoopy. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that Camp Snoopy did was a uh, Halloween haunt. And uh, I don't even recall what the space was, where the space was, but we, we it was did. In the ballroom. The ballroom. Wasn't it? It, it, it was in the ballroom. Okay. Yep. Now right. where flyover is yeah. located. Okay. okay. Yep. But yeah, it was a ballroom. But it was a, it was a haunted maze, and there was no maze to it. You just kind of walked through, and people jumped out and said boo and that kind of thing. <laughs> and uh, uh, my my wife was kind of in charge of it the first year, and they were short of people, and so uh, I was I was a. a a, a monster. My my sister was a monster. My brother was the, the, the in the best host. sense of the word. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> uh, we had a we had a great time with it and uh, spent most of the money we made after the uh, the park closed. Uh, <laughs> but we still had a very good time. And then the second year, uh, we had just uh, my wife had just had our second child, and so couldn't do it. And they asked me to run the Halloween haunt, which was because I was experienced. I had a whole year of experience <laughs> doing this kind of thing, and nobody else came back. <laughs> Um, but we had we had a lot of fun doing it, and uh, the, the the fake smoke I can still smell it in my nostrils at certain times. And yep. we did we did a fake uh, an electric chair, which I'm pretty sure we could not do today. <laughs> I'm <laughs> guessing that would not yeah. be allowed. And my favorite, and you know, I'm going to tell this story too. So we, oh boy. We, we did a um, I know this story. The, there, there was one of the attractions as you walk through. It was called the Rat Kitchen, and they had a kind of a kitchen set up, oh, and two people dressed as cooks, and we had 50 white rats. In the, in the kitchen, and it was behind glass, kind of halfway up, and people would walk through, and it'd just be grossed out, and it stunk because there were 50 rats, and they were doing what rats do. And these poor kids working They as, weren't real rats. They were, were real they? rats. They were oh live rats. They were real rats. Oh, and gross. these poor kids were getting bit all the time. It was just a mess. Uh, and, There's got to be a health code oh. thing around that. This was well, 28 years ago or 29 yeah. years ago, right? Oh and every, every night... Uh, we, every night we would have to, we, the rats would arrive and we'd count the rats out as we put them into the attraction. And then every night when we were done, we would count the rats back in. And everything was fine. The last night, Halloween night, we were wrapping up and we had 50 rats out there. And I remember standing there counting and going 46, 47. Oh, no. And we were missing three rats that <laughs> night. And so... <laughs> I'm guessing. Right, you know, rest assured, <laughs> they are not here. They are free Enough somewhere time. out in the wild. Time has passed, we can yes. oh. No, we still laugh about that. So I'm excited. I'm excited. Now, you must have been here during the Halloween haunt era, weren't you? Weren't you I here? started in 97, the fall of 97. Okay, I'm trying to remember exactly when it was. But yeah. it was well, right I remember there. Elvira yeah. coming. Oh, yeah. uh, I remember, when I remember we had the mystery mine ride, yep. and that was, I think mm -hmm. she was part of the haunt that year. So, yeah, because we had the monsters on different rides and mm -hmm. things like that. But maybe we have to have a little encore presentation from the mayor <laughs> so. and be a surprise <laughs> guest, surprise monster in our haunt. I love, yeah. So, yeah. Rest, they are, will not be <laughs> white rats. No, I exactly. promise you they will not be rats. <laughs> a celebrity appearance. Yes. Celebrity I love appearance. It. I'd love yes. to do it. If you're willing to do love that, that'd be great. Fun. Yes. So I have a question for you. For somebody who is young in their career and they have an interest in politics, hmm. what advice would you give to somebody that's saying, you know, it, there's a lot pol politically these days, right? A mm -hmm. lot of conversations, mm -hmm. uh, whether they tend to be left or right. What it, advice would you give to someone who says, I want to make a difference? 
I, and a couple of things. First of all, uh, I would I would suggest strongly that they they really be informed about the area they're hoping to represent. Who, who, sure. who the, the area, the people, the the population that they're they're hoping to represent, and know understand who the folks are, the, who the community is, what the community is about. Understand the issues and truly understand them. Don't just think about it, but actually understand the issues and dig in and, and do it. And and I would also encourage people who who just jump right into politics. I mean, that's that's yep. one thing. But to to be involved in your community, we have yeah, I, I we have so many opportunities within the city of Bloomington, and, and and every community everywhere has so many opportunities. Whether it's boards and commissions within the city structure itself, or volunteer opportunities. I think of all the volunteer possible possibilities here in Bloomington yeah. uh, d just to be involved in the community in some way and and be grounded in the community and to, to learn a little bit about how the community works and how it runs and the people who uh, who are underrepresented and the people who have influence and how to make it all kind of work and, and make it worthwhile and uh, I don't think it's a, a leap right in kind of thing I think it's a it, it, it's, it's like anything you, Learn, learn the ropes first yeah. and, and really kind of understand what you're getting into. Decide if that's what you want to do. Mm -hmm. And if politics is your thing, uh, I know a lot of folks who think, yeah, politics is your thing, and then they get into um, a, a volunteer situation or yeah. a, a nonprofit in the community, <coughs> and they realize, you know what, that's really where my passion is, mm -hmm. or that's really where I can make a difference in the yeah. community, and that's what I want to do. And awesome. so, you know, get people involved, get involved, understand what you're doing, and get involved and, and really confirm what you think you want to do. And now a question for you, Jill, um, from a business leader perspective, right? You lead Mall of America. Um, talk me through some of the opportunities and the challenges in working closely with the city government. We happen to have a really good relationship, but there are sometimes when we don't see exactly eye to eye. Talk through what we do and how we achieve the result that we're hoping to achieve both on both ends. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think to your point, Tim, is, you know, making sure you take the time to be educated on what's happening around you and not just to go in like a bull in a china closet to just ask for what you need it's yeah. trying to find mutual benefit for both parties mm -hmm. and i think that's why we've worked so well together because we'll present both sides of the case or the opportunity of the project that we're working on but finding the win-win for both sides mm -hmm. um, and we always have that the customer the constituent the resident of bloomington and our visitors yeah. in mind when we are looking at those projects and opportunities to work together um, and always finding that compromise of that middle ground that's going to work for everybody um, and if it's not there then we bring it back we retool it and bring it forward again mm -hmm. um, but very few times have i've ever experienced us closing the book on an idea it's just maybe how it's presented might not work out on yeah. the first time mm -hmm. around and we just have to rework it yeah. um, but it's just been such a pleasure to work with you specifically but just the entire Bloomington team because we work so well together mm -hmm. because we have a common goal in mm -hmm. mind and it's about bringing people to Minnesota putting Minnesota on the yeah. map putting Bloomington on the map and making sure that the visitors that do come come back time and time again because we have such a great experience to deliver for them. And I think you're exactly right because I can't remember a, a an idea, a project, a proposal where either one of us, either side, the, the, the city or, or mm -hmm. the mall, brought it forward and said, "Hey, let's try this." And we said, "Yep, that's it. We're done. Yep. Perfect. We're good." Yeah. No, that never that has <laughs> never happened. And it's it's a back and forth, and mm -hmm. sometimes it takes a couple of weeks. Sometimes it takes a couple of years to to nail mm -hmm. things out. But you're right. If we if ultimately the, we have the same goals and the kind of the same vision of what mm -hmm. we're hoping to accomplish, figure it, it we figure it out. And it's mm -hmm. and it's uh, there's enough incentive. For, for both mall, MOA and, and the city of Bloomington to figure it out one way or another. Mm -hmm. And I think that constructive conversation is valuable because mm -hmm. it just makes that project that much stronger and better in the long run. Absolutely. And we do that even internally. Yeah. If we have ideas, yep. very rarely does it actually happen right away with that first iteration or you know version yep. of the idea. Mm -hmm. It's, it's great to be challenged and to poke holes through those yep. ideas to make sure that it's the best that it possibly can be. Yep. And I think that that's why we have such great success together because we do challenge one another to make sure that it's the best and yep. that we can roll it mm -hmm. out. So. Well, and I think also that it's not, it, it's not an antagonistic relationship. Mm -hmm. I mean, we can, we can yep. disagree. We can you know, mm -hmm. disagree across the table and say, no, that's not going to work. And, and yep. you know, say we're not going to talk. We, we, we want to come back later. However, we want to do it. And then we do. Mm -hmm. And then we do. And then... Yep. We, we see each other at a social event and, and we talk and I ask how your kids are doing and you ask yep. what's going on. I mean, that's that's how it, it all works. It's Absolutely. not this antagonistic relationship. It's this 
cultivated, there I go again, yes. this cultivated it's relationship over the decades that, uh, is real, that, that pays off. Yes. Do we and have time for a quick story? We do, yes. So one thing I love about our mayor is the fact that he will literally dive right into the projects that we work yes. in. On um, Recently, we went out to New Jersey to explore American Dream. And for those that don't know, that's our sister property in New Jersey on the yep. East Coast. And, um, and they have a water park that is very similar to resembling what we're looking to create here. Yep. And so we were able to bring some of the Bloomington officials with us and entertain them out there, at least to show them what the future could look like at Mall of America at the mm -hmm. water park. And we were finishing up the day with meetings and everybody kind of taking their own um, private tours and ex experiences. And Tim was the first to be ready to put on a swimsuit to jump into the water park to experience it firsthand so that he could come back and tell the story of what the, the experience could be at Mall of mm -hmm. America. And not a lot of people would do that, is to really take that experience firsthand so that you could tell that mm -hmm. story versus hearing it from someone else and sharing that along. Yeah. So um, I think that's awesome for your leadership and that you are willing to take the time to experience those opportunities so that you can share it with the folks here in Bloomington yeah. and beyond. Well, you, you make it sound a little more high-minded than it was. I just had a great time. It was just a lot of fun. <laughs> I just <laughs> wanted to go in and have fun. It was great. It was oh, great. It, it, it was. Thanks. And uh, it, it, it was. I figured if we're going to... A couple of things. If we were going to, if we were going to consider it, if we were going to look at that proposal here in Bloomington, people needed to actually see it to really kind of wrap their heads around mm -hmm. it. And talking to a lot of folks, that really helped. I mean, until you see it in an experience that they really didn't know, yep. and they only saw it because, if you remember, I was the only one—not the first one, but the only one—to jump into the pool, and I was yes. happy to do it because it was—I I enjoyed it. But yeah, to 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 do the type of thing and to think, gosh, if it, it was mid-February, I think when we were out there, maybe mm -hmm. March, mm -hmm. and to think. You know, if I was in Minnesota right now yep. and there was still two feet of snow on the ground, would this be would this be fun? And yeah, yeah. it would be. It would Heck be a yeah. lot of fun. Heck yes. yeah! So that is the next big project from all of America that we're all working on jointly and trying to make it to become a reality. But a, a question for both of you, and I think I think I'll start with Jill first and then Tim. But in your wildest dreams, what would your hope and your vision be for the mall ten years from now, and and our surrounding community, the South Loop neighborhood of Bloomington, Minnesota? So I'd love mm -hmm. to hear what you would hope that might look like and what you hope it might look okay. like. Well, working on the design plans for the World Expo, I have a, a glimpse into what's possible. Yep. Um, and looking at those complementary uses to extend <coughs> what we have today here at Mall of America, you know, not extending the retail use, yeah. but really looking at the entertainment components. And that's yep. where success is gonna lie because we have plenty of retail. We already have great dining and attractions, but there can be more from the entertainment side of things. Yeah. The water park being one component, um, additional yeah. hospitality. Um, we've had great success with our connected hotels, so to be able to add additional rooms connected, especially in Minnesota, mm -hmm. it's nice not to have to go outside yes. and have those connected components. But looking and leaning into that healthy planet, healthy people has a lot um, that will work well for our property, whether that's medical technology and innovation, or if it's more of the sports and athletics and yeah. events and entertainment, thinking on those lines and the venues that will support that type love of theme that. Um, is where I see our future going. I love it. Mayor? I, and I couldn't have said it better. That's exactly what I, I would think also. And that kind of falls into this whole notion of where people want to be, place where people want to be, and whatever that combination is, uh, in in the area around here, but I also think of uh, thinking of the the South Loop neighborhood. Mm -hmm. uh, as you head to the far east part of South Loop, all of our directions here, yep. uh, the we, we we've got a growing neighborhood over there. Mm -hmm. We've got a number of uh, apartments. We've got a, you know, a couple of condo buildings. We've got a new grocery store that's going to be opening over there. I uh, just heard that there's a possibility of a new senior living mm -hmm. facility over there. Mm -hmm. So to combine all of those elements of of the of the, the entertainment, the uh, hospitality industry, to combine the neighborhood aspect of people living here, and frankly, to combine, uh, we, we've got uh, an industrial base in South Loop mm -hmm. with uh, six sensors, yep. with polar semiconductors. Uh, it, it's just an interesting kind of mixed use area that mm -hmm. I think is unlike any other in the Twin Cities. And, and I, like, uh, I like bringing people here for the first time, folks who are not typically around Bloomington or, or know of it, and to drive them around out there, and they see the enormous sick sensors building, to see yep. to see the public art that's there, to see these yep. all the uh, apartment buildings, to see all these, and you're literally right on the Minnesota River Valley, and mm -hmm. on top of it all, and it just kind of opens their eyes. And uh, I, again, I go back to 
the vision of city leaders and years and years ago, well, well before that I, w I was here, where they kind of saw out there, and I remember my first years in, on the city council where they would put up these, you know, all these yep. drawings about possibilities, and I kind of rolled my eyes <laughs> and thought, yeah. And now it's actually kind of coming true mm -hmm. over there. And that really, it says a lot about uh, foresight and planning and playing the long game and making and it work. Vision. And vision. Mm -hmm. Yep, and dreaming big. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to wrap this up here shortly, and I'm actually going to ask a few questions of both of you, if you're all right with that. Just okay. some really quick ones. All right. um, just quick answers, if you would. So um, your favorite ride at Nickelodeon Universe? Mr. Mayor. I'm going back to the uh, treetop tumbler at... Uh, wow, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so. well, not back to camp for three days. Yeah, <laughs> fairly odd coaster. We'll go with that. Yeah. Jill. Rock bottom plunge. Awesome. Your favorite restaurant to eat at Mall of America? Crave. Crave. Twin City Grill. Awesome. Your favorite food there? Mm, chopped salad. Ooh. Sushi. And your favorite non-Nickelodeon attraction within Mall of America? Attraction or store? Uh, we'll do attraction first, then store. Okay. A attraction... Uh, uh, Jill. Flyover. Flyover, I love it. I, I think just the... Holiday version of flyover. <laughs> no, whatever you want. I, I'm, going, I'm going with the rotunda and everything that goes on. All the events oh, and everything rotunda. that goes in the rotunda. And your favorite everyday store at the mall? Ooh. Um, you go first. I Boot can't. barn. Boot barn, I Boot like barn. it. Good. <laughs> yes. Did you go Whoa. there for the Taylor Swift Whoa. concert this past weekend? I, I'm not a Swifty and I did not get any glitter there, but uh, I, I have bought two pair of boots there, so... Um, I can't pick one because then it kind Your of favorite special occasion place to get something special? Nordstrom. I can't remember the name. The, the, uh, the, the, the suit place with all the great jackets. What, help me with that. Indochino? Indo yes. Exactly. Okay, yes, good. Yes. We'll go with that, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> the great suit place. I love it. Uh, and we have hundreds of them here at Mall yes. of America. <laughs> yes. That's all I'm saying. Uh, Mayor Tim Bussey, thank you so much for joining us for our podcast. Jill, thank you as always. Appreciate it so much. Absolutely. You've been an amazing guest, and, and we invite you back uh, for many more if you'd like. I would love to, and thank you so very much. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Love having the conversation. Thank you. Absolutely. Yes. And we want to thank all of our listeners and viewers for joining us for this edition of So Much More. Please make sure you know that you can find us anywhere you find podcasts, your favorite podcasts. And uh, we look forward to seeing you again next week for our next show. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for tuning in to today's episode of So Much More. If you want to hear more, be sure to subscribe to our podcast wherever you find your favorites, including Spotify, Apple, or Google Podcasts. And you can also watch a video cast on YouTube. Go to podcast.mallofamerica.com to leave a review, ask a question, or give us an idea for the show. Until next time, thanks for listening. So Much More is presented by the Bloomington Convention and Visitors Bureau, the official destination marketing organization for the city of Bloomington, Minnesota. Before your next trip to Mall of America, visit BloomingtonMN.org for answers to all your travel questions, deals and packages for hotel stays, and so much more.